If you enjoy these programs, please like and subscribe. Why order? Because Hashem wants to wake you up and say, there's a God of Israel. I'm your father. I love you. You're my little girl. I want to be close to you again. Would you join me? First, I'll say I'm a former, um, a former pastor myself. And because of you and listening to you, I walked away from Christianity a few years ago. And, uh, my question is on the lines of is Christianity really big on salvation. In order to go to heaven, you have to believe in Jesus. And if you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to hell. Right. Um, looking at the coming of the Moshiach, uh, you have Gog and Magog, the nations coming up against Israel. Yes. And then having a part in the world to come after that. Yes. It appears when I read through Tanakh that the nations that come against Israel, which is the Gog, Magog, and they're going to be annihilated. They're going to be done away with. Yes. And yet the nations that remain um, are going to come to Jerusalem to yes. learn about who God I is. I like you. I don't know who you are, but make sure we <laughs> exchange contact. Is, is that, yes. Yeah, thank yes. you, thank you, thank you. Thank that means you. a lot. But is that saying that when that happens, that the nations that remain are not necessarily righteous before that that time of that war that yes. takes place, but we are they remaining because they're allies to Israel, or are we are they remaining because they didn't participate? I mean, why why are they remaining? Are they righteous before already? Just because you said everyone believes in God or a higher power, intuitively believes in intuitively right, believes. Yeah. So we're, we're hardwired for that. But it appears that they yeah. may not be righteous until. Right. After that war, and you and the Jews are still here to teach, and and we're coming to. I'm right. already on, on my way to Jerusalem, though. I'm Baruch already Hashem. grabbing a hole to the coattails. So. Oh, Baruch Hashem. But but are they? Is that when they will become righteous, sure. or is there something happening before then right. that they're right. here to call? Well, it's very very sweet, very sweet. You're a very sweet man. I'm a, I'm a little richer right now because I met you. Thank you for enriching my life. Why in Tanakh, when God brings about a salvation, does he bring about this restoration, spiritual and physical, in a series of events? Things don't happen suddenly. Not one, but 10 plagues, like God couldn't all wrap it up in one plague. And did God really need Pharaoh's permission? How odd. And God keeps strengthening Vayechazek Lev Paro. He keeps strengthening the heart of Pharaoh. The two terms that are used in the Hebrew, it's marvelous. In English, it's lost completely. <clears throat> but Pharaoh should have folded his cards immediately. <clears throat> in card games, terms are used like going on tilt, right? When people lose repeatedly, they become so disoriented that they can't play to their maximum ability and they go on tilt. So Pharaoh, why didn't you give up it? Two, three, four plays, enough. Hashem keeps strengthening him. Why 10? Because people should watch and know, ooh, there's something happening. There are many of you sitting here this evening who didn't at one time care much about the Jews. 20 years ago, I asked you, what do you think about the Jews? And it wasn't me, but just a, a, a beer buddy, you go, eh, nothing. And now you're here praising Hashem, right? What happened? Something is happening. The Jews are returning. People are waking up. The Bible tells us that it's this series of events. Remember, everyone has to have free will. You can't interfere with free will. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu does something. There is something about Jewish suffering that triggers within the heart of the non-Jew a love for the God of Israel and repentance. In Tanakh, we find that when non-Jews are confronted with the suffering of the Jew, 
They just go to the movie, they watch Schindler's List, right? And they weep like a baby. They didn't care about Jews. I mean, it's not that they hate Jews, they weren't members of the Klan, but they weren't the biggest Jew lovers in the world. But there's something about it, they're watching these images and they're going, Jewish suffering, it's doing something to me, it's affecting me. Tanakh tells us that the suffering of the Jew, the Gentiles will see that, and it causes them to repent and to recognize that the Jews suffered because of their bad behavior. That's the delicious soliloquy of Isaiah 53. People don't understand this. Isaiah 53, the first eight passages, is a soliloquy. The nations of the world are speaking aloud in their astonishment. Me, hem and l'shmu ha'senu, Israel Hashem ha'mi nikusa. Who would have believed such a thing? And the non-Jews figure out from there, oh, Two things, now we, un see until the point of the messianic age, the non-Jews who are the spiritual enemies of the Jewish people, what do they attribute Jewish suffering to? Yes, people are not so fond about the Jews. They say, why do the Jews suffer so much? Believe me, they'll tell you they killed Christ. <laughs> Believe me, I hope not. See, I noticed that no one went, no way. Like everyone, oh, yeah, I heard that plenty of times, right? And no one said, you know, now the rabbi's making this up completely, right? No, that's the standard answer. The standard answer is, what everybody knows that the Jews said, no, we don't have a monopoly on it, but the Jews, like, it was, why? They killed Christ, they rejected the Lord. That's it. First Thessalonians 2, 16, 14 through 16, it's, it's really right there. The Jews suffered because they killed Christ. Augustine, huge point of this in his City of God, that that's what the, why God keeps the Jews around. Augustine's City of God is an apologetic to defend Christianity against problems. Why did, the, why did Rome fall in 410? And why are the Jews still here if they're no longer chosen? So the Jews, he said, are here as an example of what happens to a people that reject the Lord. They're here preserved, but they are a downtrodden people, and Jerusalem will remain downtrodden because that's, everyone should know, this is what happens to a people that not only reject the Lord, but commit the unimaginable crime of deicide, of killing God. Wow. Even though, logically, Christians should be thanking you, thank you very much. If you didn't kill him, we would, <laughs> he would have died of Alzheimer's, we, we would be hit by a bus. They don't Christians have to wear a bus on the neck. That doesn't matter if it doesn't make any sense at all. Why does salvation occur through a series of events? Now, if you think this is some sort of homily that, that a rabbi with a nice suit is made, no. The, the Passover meal that we eat on the night of the 15th day of the first month is called a what? It's called a Passover Seder. What does Seder mean? Order. It's called order. Now, if you were the committee for the Jewish meal, I said, okay, we need to come up with a name for the meal that is more pregnant with Jewish traditions and customs than any other during the year, and that marks the delivery of the children of Israel from Pharaoh after hundreds of years of slavery, what name do you think we should give it? You call it a lot of things. I remember as a little boy, little boy. I don't know when it was, but I was old enough to buy my mother a present for Mother's Day. It was a big deal. I don't know. So I asked, Mommy, what should I get you? She said, get me perfume. I said, okay, I'll never forget this. So I had money that I saved up. And then I thought, what, which, which perfume should I get you? And she said, oh, oh, it was called poison. <laughs> and I was eight years old. Well, that's a heck of a name. They must have sat around those marketing geniuses sitting around. What do we call this thing? Oh, cold poison. Well, that should do well. All right, you adults are weird. I go to 13th Avenue. There was a huge perfume store. I'm a little boy. It's one of those memories that never leave you. I could play the film in my... And I could look up at the lady, the big blonde-haired lady. I think it was smell... The whole place smelled good. And I said, I want to get my mommy of Mother's Day a bottle of perfume. Which one? Poison. Oh, that's lovely. Which one do you want? What do you mean? She said, do you want the perfume or the toilet water? <laughs> I have a conundrum.
sitting right there. Oh, put him in the toilet water. The way to go to here is there. What a struggle. It was one of my earliest struggles. Which one do I go? What do you mean toilet water? What are you talking about? I didn't understand that at the time. But I, I thought that the perfume would probably be a better idea. How do they come up with toilet wa water in Paris? I didn't ask. Whatever. Okay. So sometimes these are silly words because French words suddenly take on a, a different meaning. I don't know how we went to that direction, but I, I've been hanging on to that story for about 55 years and I thought it was about time that I shared with you. So if we were coming up with a name that marked the meal that we fulfill all these mitzvot, all these commandments at this meal, I think if I asked you to come up with a name, I don't know if order would be the one. You'd come up with very fancy names like redemption. I mean, we can think of very low, not order. And as it turns out, it's called a Seder in order. Why? Because it really is an order of 15 events. What is going on? So Rabbi saying, oh, you're not making this up. Oh, no, no, no. No, what happens is Hashem has an order of events that bring us finally to the full redemption. Why order? Because Hashem wants to wake you up and say, there's a God of Israel. I'm your father. I love you. You're my little girl. I want to be close to you again. Would you join me? So people are watching. They're seeing an order of events happening. The Jews are returning. They suffer so much. That's why the nations of the world in Isaiah 53 come up with their soliloquy. That happens in the Messianic ages. Two things. Number one, the Jews suffered. Pesha ami negalamo. The Jews suffered. They have to make sense of Jew suffering when Messiah comes. When the Messiah comes, remember what we spoke about a moment ago. When the Messiah comes, the old excuse of Augustine that the Jews suffered because they rejected the Messiah or our demigod or whatever no longer works. That it worked great. But now it's like we now return back to our default question. Then why did the Jews suffer? And the Gentiles understand two things. These are the kings of nations. Number one, they suffer because we be behave badly. And number two, because of their suffering, it brought us to repentance. By his stripes, we were healed. Let's praise the Lord together. Raise your hands. It's so beautiful. This is so beautiful. So now we put the G in. We have the full G. That's what's really happening. And the chutzpah of Esau, the chutzpah of Edom, the arrogance of the church to, to weaponize the passage, that's the soliloquy of the repentance of the nations of the world who discover that, in fact, the Jews suffered as a result of their bad behavior, and by his stripes, we were healed. It means we did too because the Jews suffered so much. We sided with the Jewish people. And that's why these events are happening slowly. It will be the biggest danger in the world that Meshach just suddenly the Trump is heard in Zion. Why? No one have a chance to do tshuva. It has to be a genuine tshuva. It has to be a genuine repentance. If an angel of the Lord would come to appear to you in your room, you would immediately repent for sure, but you'd have no free will. Ah, people, angels appearing all over the place in the Hebrew Bible, but then idol worshippers were able to do miracles too, so the balance was still maintained. Now the non, now all these miracles that are happening and all these false religions are fake, and therefore it's a perfect balance. Everything is all balanced out. They're speaking in tongues, which is all fake, and therefore angels are not appearing to anyone in the, in the Holiday Inn. That's all, that all came to an end. So that's the key. The key is that also, moreover, when chas v'chalil, when heaven forbid, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is bringing um, Yisurim to the Jewish people and there's gonna be destruction, it doesn't happen at once. It happens wars between the Jews and the Romans. Hopefully they would repent. The Jews are going to war with Romans 66. For years they could have repented, ultimately by 70 was destroyed. Why so slow? Because the people would do tshuva. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. So that's the key. The key is that there's a series of events and nations are watching now like never would. This is unprecedented in history. It really is a marvel of history. Thank you so much. And may I say this to you, my dear brother, welcome home. Okay. Thank you. If you enjoy these programs, please like and subscribe. Adon Olah, Asher Malach, B'terem Kol, Yetzir Nivra, Let Nasa, B'chef Tzokol, Azai Melech, Azai Melech, Shemu Nikra. 
Thank <laughs> you. 